Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to talk about a single issue because now I've talked about like 10 random comics, you know, like I had Silver Surfer Black, uh, which had Null in it, um, which that's I was like, that's the only thread that ties it to the show is Null. And I, that was the one part of the story I didn't even like. And then same with Savage Avengers. I was like, oh, Venom kind of ties it to the show. But there's not a lot of Venom in it. And it's also found I found that to be the weakest part of the story is the Venom stuff. So this one. We have a Venom story where, where I actually feel like Venom is the strongest point of the story and it connects it to the show uh, even stronger than the last two episodes. But I did want to get those out of the way because people did ask me to talk about those stories and I promised I would a while ago and I never got around to it. So hopefully you enjoyed those digital codes and you got them. Uh, this one does not come with a digital code because this is a Marvel book, but it's produced by or released by IDW. Um, so this is not actually, you know, distributed strictly by Marvel. It has Marvel characters in it, but this is like a new line that they do for kids. So this is definitely a kid's book. So some of you out there like, uh, you know, Swordsman and some other people that are into the more mature stuff or like the more uh, mature takes on these characters, you might not like this one too much. Um, this is a hard book to get a hold of, by the way. I think it's this book sells less than like a thousand copies a month or somewhere around there. So that means if your comic store got it, they probably only got one copy. Um, there are three different covers or two different covers and they have them in the back here, which is great because I was like, oh man, you know, I don't get a choice in the covers because you get whatever, uh, you know, the store orders. But yeah, that's the main cover, obviously. And then that's the variant cover by John Boy Myers, um, which looks amazing. I think that's John Boy. Yeah, John Boy Myers, um, who's a fantastic artist who I've met a couple times. Super nice guy. And he always draws a really cool thing. He draws good spawn stuff too. Um, and then that's the main cover that's here. So this storyline, like I said, it's kind of an alternate universe. It's it's four kids. It's Spider-Man in high school, and his two best friends also happen to be Spider-People. So Gwen Stacy in this universe is Spider-Gwen, and Miles Morales is another Spider-Man, obviously. So uh, this book, when it starts off, it's Peter at school, and then he sees on the Daily Bugle app that there's a wanted uh, picture of a Spider-Man in a black costume. And Spider-Man's like, wait, Spider-Man in a black costume? He's like, uh, but... That's not Gwen. He goes, it kind of looks like Miles' costume, except it doesn't have the red eyes. Could this be Miles? So he's like texting him like, hey, have you guys heard about this new spider person that's running around? Apparently there's a fourth one of us. <laughs> you know, like, we already thought there was enough, just the three of us, but apparently there's another spider person out there. So Spider-Man is like on the trail of this new Spider-Man, the person, you know, the new Spider-Man's webbing off and Spider-Man's going to find them. And then when he comes across is the lizard has been defeated by somebody. And they, you know, so Spider-Man shows up and Miles comes in and he's like, wait, Miles, where'd you come from? And so basically him and Gwen, Peter and Gwen start suspecting that maybe this new Spider-Man isn't new. It's just Miles in a slightly altered costume. And Miles doesn't like, you know, that he's like, hey, why are you guys accusing me of something? He's like, I'm not, I didn't beat up the lizard. Like, I, I don't, what are you talking about? He's like, I'm Miles Morales. I'm your friend. And they, you know, they still have suspicions. And, and Gwen even says, Look, if we're wrong about this, Peter, we're terrible friends, which I 100% agree. They immediately suspect their friend <laughs> of being like a bad guy or something. And and so Miles gets offended by that. And he's like, you know what? You guys, you know, go do this on, on your own. I shouldn't have to prove to you that I'm on the up and up. We've been through adventures together. You know, we've we've helped people before. You know, I can't believe you would suspect me of of you know, crossing the line because apparently this Venom is hurting people or this Venom, this new Spider-Man is hurting people. Um, so Gwen starts doing some research and she finds out like where some of these stories are coming from. And she learns about a disgraced journalist who went crazy on alien conspiracy theories uh, named Eddie Brock. And so what I liked about this book was that it's kind of Eddie Brock from the movie without really being Eddie Brock from the movie. Um, so it has like Eddie is he, you know, he's Venom, obviously Gwen shows up and sees him. He's in a bodega, which is obviously something that was in the, the Venom movie. And, uh, the, the woman who was, you know, being attacked, although she's younger here, um, he's like, you know, she was being attacked by this guy. He's a thief. He was coming in to steal from her. This is my bo bodega. I come in here all the time and this woman was being attacked. So I'm going to eat the face off of this, this thief. And Gwen's like, you can't eat people, you know, like, what are you doing? So the two of them get into a fight and he's like, look, I'm not a bad guy. And he's like, I'm just trying to stop a thief. And that's what I did with Lizard. And that's what, you know, that's what I do. I'm a hero. And so they, you know, start talking some more. And then as she, you know, learns more about him, gets him to talk, uh, you know, and, and, and open up more, she throws like some kind of burning chemical on him. 
um, at, because they're still fighting and he still wants to get the thief. So he runs over to grab the thief and Gwen hits him with something and it burns and it causes the suit to se you know, separate from Eddie. So Eddie's kind of in control here. And I, I really like the artwork in this book too. Um, and so Eddie's in control and he's talking to Gwen and he's like, look, uh, it's complicated. This symbiote, I found it at a lab that I was investigating. So I'm guessing maybe Life Foundation, although they don't say it. And he goes, yes, there was aliens. Uh, the scientist took my laptop and my phone uh, because I have evidence. So I need to get to the lab. But on my way, I saw these, you know, lizard and I saw the thief here at the bodega and I decided to stop them. And so Gwen's like, well, you can't eat people. There's no way I'm going to let you do that on my watch. And then, of course, he knocks Gwen out and he says, yeah, but nobody can stop us. We are Venom. So, uh, so it, yeah, it's very kitty, very, you know, uh, simple uh, in, in its execution. The artwork is very nice, though. I really do like the art style in this book. Um, the artist is uh, David Pinto is the artist, and Valentina Pinto is the colorist on the book. And uh, uh, Delilah S. Dawson wrote the storyline. And like I said, I mean, it, it's, it's effective in the sense that it's great for kids. Uh, but I found that intriguing that they kind of went with movie Eddie Brock in this one. I was like, that's cool. Like, you know, it's he's a misunderstood guy. He's like, hey, look, I'm, I think I'm doing the right thing. I'm a hero. I stopped the lizard and now I'm stopping this thief. And she's like, yeah, but you're going to eat him. And he's like, so? <laughs> he's like, my, my symbiote needs to eat. So, you know, but, and that's one less bad guy on the street. So he's, again, that broken moral compass. Like, I found it to be very true to Eddie Brock. And then it wasn't like he, it wasn't like the Sin Eater story where, you know, like we debate, you know, whether he was, you know, really a good journalist or whether he was cutting corners. Like we always debate that on this channel of like where Eddie Brock was mentally when he, you know, broke that storyline. And this one, it's different. It's him literally trying to do the right thing, trying to expose potentially the life foundation. Uh, but he talks about how he went to a lab and that uh, they, you know, he got bonded with the symbiote there. They were doing experiments and they took his laptop and all the evidence he had. So he's just trying to get that back so he can clear his name. So he's not a disgraced journalist anymore. And I'm like, this is pretty good. I mean, it's not bad. And I think there's only maybe one or two issues left because they're going to reboot this series, I think, in January with because uh, I guess it's not selling very well. That's usually the what you have to do if a book drops, especially if it drops under a thousand and it has Spider-Man's name on it and it sells less than a thousand a month, then yeah, you got to reboot it and do a new number one. Uh, so I guess this is might be the last story they tell in here. So issue 10 and then it's going to be to be continued in issue 11, which has uh, this cover here. And that'll be the next cover. And I think that's going to be the finale of the story. So we'll definitely talk about it and discuss it when it comes out. But I just wanted to bring this to people's attention. If you can't find a physical copy of this, I don't, you know, chances are you might not be able to. Um, so if you can't, just buy the digital one on Comixology. I think it's, you know, $3.99. In like a couple weeks, it'll be $1.99 if you want to wait for it. But it's fun. I, I, I honestly thought it was a good read. And uh, it brought in a, a you know, a, a Venom Eddie Brock that kind of was reminiscent of the movie, which I liked. I was, I just found that refreshing. And it's not like it's a mind blowing storytelling or anything like that. This is definitely something for kids. Um, but with the combination of the art and the version of Eddie that they do in this book, I just found it nice. It just, it made me think of like, you know, simple, uh, you know, Venom stories, which we don't get anymore because now he's connected to a God and there's like a big, you know, null story and there's crossing over with silver surfer and savage Avengers. Like, Venom's not a simple character anymore. He's uh, he, he's getting more and more complex and complicated, but not like in a deep way, just in a busy way. Like he's got a lot of plates he's spinning. So this was nice to read something that was just one plate spinning, you know, and uh, and just kind of more focused on on the character. And I like that. So I would say if you haven't read Marvel Action Spider-Man number 10, go pick it up. If you can't find a physical one, like I said, chances are you might not be able to. Pick up the digital copy. It's worth reading. It's a lot of fun. And uh, we'll definitely talk about issue 11 when it drops very soon. Um, I think that's it for me today. I just wanted to ease back into this. So I got these three episodes done. Like I said, Lethal Protectors and Venom number 19 and Weapon Plus we're going to re review and give out the digital codes for all of those in a single episode, probably on Wednesday night. I'll probably post it Wednesday night. Um, so, uh, you know, so that's that'll be the next Venom thing we do. There was some Venom news uh, about J. Jonah Jameson maybe being in Morbius um, and everything like that. Um, I might make a video on that. I might not. I mean, I'm talking about it here. But they were saying J. Jonah Jameson might be in Morbius and he might be the same J. Jonah Jameson that's in 
the Spider-Man movies and he's going to be the character that kind of connects them all together. And that makes sense on some level because they launched that J. Jonah Jameson Daily Bugle website where they upload videos every now and again with J. Jonah Jameson talking about Spider-Man. So I guess they, when they had him in the studio for that scene, they probably recorded a bunch of stuff and they're using it as marketing material for Spider-Man to keep Spider-Man in the, you know, in the, in the zeitgeist, you know, out there trending still and people talking about Spider-Man. Um, now that Sony has more control over him again, Obviously, they want that the news cycles to never end on Spider-Man. So, uh, so yeah, maybe we won't. I don't think I'll make a whole video on that, but maybe we'll discuss it at some point. The main thing I want to do too between now and Wednesday is I want to try to work on the pre-production video. Um, I talked about how you know in this show we sometimes dive into movie making. You know, like when we talk about Venom. I want to talk about movie making as well, and I don't know everything about movies uh, and, and movie making and what each role does i try to do my research sometimes i get stuff wrong um but with pre-production i've actually worked in pre-production before and you know kevin smith put out a lot of these great videos on his youtube channel for his jay and son and bob reboot where he explains what pre-production is too so i was watching a couple of those taking some notes you know looking up stuff online and then going off my own you know memory the best i can um on what pre-production is what that entails because venom is currently in pre-production so i do want to kind of talk about that what things do they cover in pre-production what kind of stuff will they talk about what kind of things do they iron out um you know casting uh, table reads you know uh, location scoutings and, and tech scoutings and all that stuff i want to talk about some of that stuff so that'll probably be one of my next episodes i don't know if, i don't know if it'll be the very next episode but i'm going to try to get it in in the next couple episodes so you'll see that very soon too and that'll be a video just kind of explaining what pre-production is and we are nearing the end of this season season three so episode 450 will be the final episode of the season and after that i will probably hit 450 around the beginning of december and so chances are from december to january 1st i will take the whole month off of venom vlog and i won't do any venom vlogs we're going to take the whole month off just because work's you know going to be crazy for me during the holidays um i will still make other videos like seek and destroy show may still go on transformers i may still review some of those comics and talk about those but for venom stuff i do want to take a break and there will probably not be a lot of movie news in that time too if there is we'll talk about it in january for sure um or i'll tweet about it or post about it or something like that but i probably won't make videos on it because i don't want to start season four until january um just because i need to work on a new intro i need to work on some other stuff and i want to get a, a different structure down if i can i mean for the most part it's going to be me talking to the camera but i still want to work on you know some other stuff too and and try to add some things to the show if i can so that's going to be season four. That'll be after the new year. But uh, we have still maybe like, what, 10 episodes left of this season. So uh, we'll try to make the most out of them. And I'll try to, you know, pack in as much as I can so we can, uh, you know, get more with each episode as we near the end of the season. So let me know what you think of Marvel Action Spider-Man and then the other books. Please go watch those episodes, uh, Savage Avengers and Silver Surfer Black. I recorded those. Those should be posted now. Let me know what your thoughts are on those books in those comments, and let me know what your thoughts are on Marvel Action and uh, maybe the J. Jonah Jameson stuff. Anything else you want to talk about, let me know down below, and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.